Yellow Knife's giant mine operated from 1948 to 2004, extracting over 7 million ounces of gold from the area. However, 237 tons of highly toxic arsenic trioxide was left behind when Royal Oak Mines, the mine's owner, went bankrupt in the 90s, forcing the mine to close and creating an environmental disaster. Today, the Giant Mine Remediation Project is a joint venture between the federal and territorial governments to manage the arsenic waste and see to its long-term care. Journalists in Yellowknife were given a tour of the mine this month and were given updates on several ongoing projects, including the new water treatment plants that will remove arsenic from contaminated mine water before it goes into Great Slave Lake. We began construction in uh, 2023. Uh, we awarded the contract, and so it's been we're in year three of construction. Natalie Plato is deputy director of the Giant Mine Remediation Project. She says the new treatment plant replaces the current system in place since 1981 and will have effluent levels of the discharged mine water meet drinking water requirements. This was at the request of the Yellow Knives Dene First Nation as their proximity to the mine raises their concern of contamination. Effluent treatment plant uh, pumps uh, water from the underground and stores it and then seasonally we, we treat it and discharge it to Baker Pond and Baker Creek. The new water treatment plant, we will meet the new effluent criteria for our, the new water license for the giant mine remediation project, which has much more stringent uh, discharge criteria. And we will also be continually pumping the water from the underground 24-7, 365 days a year. So the treatment uh, discharge period will be continuous. Currently, the city of Yellowknife and Yellowknife's Dene receive their drinking water from the Yellowknife River upstream before the river passes the giant mine and enters Great Slave Lake. Plato continues with more input the Yellow Knives Dene had on other areas of the project, including how finely crushed rock left over from processing gold or tailings would be disposed. Um, a significant one we heard from the Yellowknife Denny First Nation was they wanted uh, the site to remain grey and ugly so people would remember in future generations that there was a mine here. Normal practice in tailings rehabilitation or reclamation is to vegetate a tailings cover. In this case we went with a rock cover so the tailings will, remember, will remain rocky and they will not be revegetated so people can remember that there's tailings there. Plato sees the continued input from the Yellowknife Dene and other indigenous Indigenous peoples as a must-have for the remediation project in order to take better steps together to clean up the mine's toxic legacy. We are on the traditional lands of, of, of the Yellowknife Standing First Nation, the Klitsho and the North Slave, and that we should uh, keep them involved and make sure they agree with the remediation plan going forward because um, to be honest, they weren't consulted originally when the mine opened, so I think it's a really significant step we're taking to make sure they're involved in the remediation. The new water treatment plant is expected to be operational by 2027, with the entire remediation project to be completed by 2038, and ongoing monitoring to continue in perpetuity. Bruce De La Cruz, APTN National News, Yellowknife.